person was meticulous in um, the way they carried out this crime. We would like to hold somebody responsible for this heinous crime. In the eyes of her family, 27-year-old Michaela Lucky embodied compassion and love in ways that words cannot fully capture. To know her was to be enamored by her infectious spirit, a beacon of warmth and positivity. As a devoted mother to her young son Jay Marion, she poured boundless love and care into nurturing his well-being. However, Michaela grappled with the weight of drugs and a mental illness that cast shadows over her aspirations. Despite her innate kindness and resilience, she faced formidable barriers in securing stable employment and housing. Okay, stay calm for me for a minute, okay? Let's just, well, I know, let us try to figure it out, see what's going on, okay? Just stay calm, okay? Okay, well, I'm just telling y'all, I was about to break my lease on Monday to move, because I was already stressing. I couldn't pay, I can't afford for my rent. Okay. And I got, and I, I got, I can't, I can't stay down here, I'm from the guys, to be honest. Okay. And so my mama told me, see if I can break my, my lease. I come break it Friday. So they told me to come to Monday. So on Monday, I was going, I was about to put, bag out my stuff of my house and break my lease on Monday and go back to my mama house. You were? Yes, ma'am. So who is that? Who, is it her house here or what is it? That's my sister. It, it's your sister? It's, well, y'all can basically, well, to, to y'all, it's still my house. But to me, it's not my house. Because um, I, I threw everything out of it and I was moving out of it. And my mama and was coming down here to help us take some more stuff out. So what, what's going on with your sister today? She, I guess she mad because she feel like the other girl came down here because she wanted that speaker. I, I told her, like, if you come down here and get that speaker, you're going to have to come get it yourself because I don't feel like walking because I'm weak. My oh, body's stressed. So out. another girl came down to yeah, get the speaker? Yeah, the big girl in, the, in, the, in there. I kept trying to tell her I didn't want to talk, but I was yelling though because my voice gone. Okay, she calm, she calm. I am calm, I'm calm. I was yelling because my voice gone. You can whisper, you can talk really quiet. Oh, my bad. No I, I was yelling because okay. my voice gone. But as y'all can see, I'm stressful. Okay. My hair came out of everything. I just go home to my mama. All I got to do is break my lease. Monday. How come you couldn't break it yesterday? Because don't cry, don't cry. Just stay calm, all right? The lady stay said, calm. I gotta sign some papers. The lady said I gotta sign some papers. And Saying put, that you're moving out? Yeah, I gotta sign my my moving papers okay. and get on the, uh, the copy of my lease. That's it. But the copy of my lease at my mama house, cause I took all my paperwork to my mama house. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I, been, I was I was already taking stuff to my mama house. Okay. Well, stay calm, all right? Just stay calm. You're doing a good job of staying calm. Um, it wasn't really me, but it was the girl that was in there. She was trying to fight me, but I told her I, I, I'm not well enough to fight. You're doing a good job of staying calm. How old are you? 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. Regardless of the challenges she confronted, Michaela deserved to be treated with dignity and respect, a fundamental truth that transcends any adversity. Yet, in a chilling testament to the depths of human cruelty, her final moments on this earth were marred by unimaginable horror. Reports recount the barbarity of Michaela's murder. Someone she knew dismembered her body, leaving her remains scattered across the serene expanse of North Fairmount Park in Cincinnati. Welcome to the American Crime Femicide channel. Please like, subscribe, share, and hit the notification button for future uploads. Residing in Cincinnati, Michaela was a familiar face in the West End community. However, her presence abruptly vanished after she boarded a metro bus in Lincoln Heights, destined for downtown, in early November. As days passed without word from Kayla, concern grew among her family, who knew her to be always reachable by phone. With mounting worry, her sisters turned to the authorities for assistance. Little did they know, a grim discovery awaited them a woman's torso found in North Fairmount Park. Despite their relentless search efforts and widespread social media outreach, Lucky's fate remained a haunting mystery. It wasn't until January 3rd, when the FBI located a severed head nearby, that the grim truth began to unfold. Subsequently, through DNA analysis and a February Facebook post by the police, asking if anyone recognized a missing person, the grim truth gradually came to light. Michaela's devastated family finally received confirmation of her tragic demise. 
The dismembered Jane Doe found in the park was none other than Michaela Lucky, whose life was brutally taken on either November 3rd or 4th. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Um, guys have been really helpful on uh, trying to get us information while we work through this uh, particular case. I um, wanted to call you all in to let you know that um, we have identified this young lady. Um, we have a photo of her. Do we put her full name up there? Uh, we didn't put her full name, but I can get it up there. Yeah. It's not. It's, it's not all there. Shouldn't have a middle name. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, interestingly, um, when we put out all the press conference and all the uh, press releases, uh, we didn't really get much information. We had a few phone calls, but nothing that yielded anything. But Cincinnati PD put together a Facebook post that we put out as well asking uh, for help and somebody saw that Facebook post and forwarded it to a family member of hers who lived out of state and she contacted our office over the weekend not this weekend but uh, a few weekends ago and um, said that you know she the this might be her sister um, and there were some Facebook pictures that we thought could possibly match with stature and so forth um, so we went uh, searching now that we had a possible name, and as it turned out, uh, BCI had her DNA on file, and we were able to match the DNA to the body. And her name is Michaela Lucky, and that's a photograph of her from BCI, um, from the Attorney General's office. And we are here today looking for any information anybody, anybody might have about her, about her whereabouts the last few weeks of October, the first week of November, anybody that she might have been with, uh, any locations where the, anybody might have seen her. This is still an ongoing investigation. This is still a homicide. We are trying to get some more information and, and um, we would like to hold somebody responsible for this heinous crime. So we're here asking for the public to help us with any information they might have about this young lady um, and her whereabouts in the first week of November, last few weeks of October, uh, which was, uh, the, which we, she was discovered on November 5th. So anybody that has any information about who she might have uh, been spending time with, or who she might have been seen with, where she might have been seen, uh, and so forth. Do you have a spelling on her name by chance? Uh, last name is L U C K Y. I think her first name is M I M A K. Oh, I'm sorry? K E Y. I L A, yeah. M-A-K-A-I-L-A, -A -A, last name L-U-C-K-E-Y. Uh, when you say that that person responded to the Facebook post, when abouts was that? Um, in February. Is there any more search for initial body parts? Any more searches? Um, as far as I know, we've pretty done a pretty exhaustive search of the area, so we haven't yielded anything. And they've, since I police has been out a number of times, our uh, urban search and rescue have been out, FBI has been out, so um, we widened the search and still didn't discover anything else. So at this point, um, we got a DNA confirmation and we know who she is, so now we're just trying to find who might have done this to her. What did you learn from her sister? Like, is, is Michaela from the area? Is she, is she local? What, what did she say? She is local. She is from this area. Uh, and she's been somewhat estranged from her family. Um, so I know there were questions before about how could somebody go missing and, and the family not know or the family not 
uh, reported, it's because she had been estranged from her family. Can you talk, and maybe Captain Sonny, this is a question for you, but just now that she's been identified, uh, kind of how that's going to help with the investigation. Sure. Thanks, mm -hmm. Dr. Uh, Steve Saunders, Captain Winston State Police Department, Criminal Investigation Section. Um, so, to your question, this identity will help us determine relationships. Uh, we're just asking for the public's help and your help as media professionals to share with the community to say, if you knew Michaela, if you knew where she uh, was frequenting, uh, we know she was uh, basically seen in the West End uh, quite a bit of Cincinnati. Uh, that might be helpful. I know her name. She went by Kayla. Or bubbles it was a nickname. Um, so uh, anybody that is familiar with her, has seen her, and now seeing this picture and having the identity, that's just helpful. And if people are concerned about coming forward with information, we always encourage people to go through Crime Stoppers 513-352-3040. It's a completely anonymous. Uh, that's going to help people come to us with tips. Uh, if they want to call our, our homicide unit directly, they can call 513-352-3542 asked to speak to Detective Green, Todd Green, or Detective Delicia Grisby. They're the leads on the case. Uh, they've done incredible work, uh, just like the coroner's office and the FBI and uh, so many people have done uh, the work to determine who she has PCI as well and, and confirm her, her identity. So, yeah, I mean, that's, right now this is a plea and a call to action uh, to ask the public if someone knows her, has relationships with her, knows where, where she was in those last few weeks of October and the beginning of November, we need you to come forward with that information. We want to find out who she was associated with, where she was last seen, who she was last seen with, um, and those all this information is helpful for us in our investigation, but it is still very an active investigation. We're pursuing that information. So, now, yeah. you already answered, but where was she found and what remains were found? Oh, yeah. this was uh, She was found in South Fairmount off of Baltimore Avenue. Um, what was found uh, initially was the torso of, of Michaela's body, which was uh, no heads, no arms, no legs. Uh, about a month later, her head was discovered. Uh, the skull was discovered um, in the same neighborhood, but I'd say a few, uh, I don't know, a total distance, a few blocks away uh, to quantify that. And uh, that's how we were able to, to again, DNA is what led us to identify her, but we were able to determine, at least locate the, the head associated with the torso. I know questions about her age. Uh, what was her exact age? Yeah. Uh, I believe she was 27. Um, and um, so initially when we said that we thought she was late 20s, early 30s, and probably had had a child and all of that is true, um, she did. Um, so uh, light skin, uh, African-American female, all of that is true. So uh, what we do know um, is that she did frequent the West End. There were different people that she'd been seen with in the West End in the past. Um, a family member had seen her, I don't remember if it was earlier that day or the day before, getting onto a Metro bus um, from, I think it was the Lincoln Heights area, and, um, and then she hadn't been seen afterwards. So if anybody has any information about her or her whereabouts, where she had been in uh, the few weeks before she'd been found or anybody she'd been seen with, that would be very helpful for us. Do we know why she was already in the attorney general system? Had she ever been reported missing in the past? Any criminal record? Uh, she does not. Um, however, she, there was a crime that she was involved with and it's a different crime and I'm not at liberty to talk about the circumstances but that's why her DNA was on file. Now I, I think at a, a previous press conference it had been mentioned that a cause of death was determined. Is that information that you're able to share at this time now that she's been identified? Or? Um, well she obviously she'd been dismembered uh, as far as um, trauma uh, I don't think we've discussed it, and at this point, because it's still an ongoing investigation, I think we're going to have to hold off on that. What we really want is some justice for her and her family, um, and we're really very interested in any information that we can get um, about who she might have been with. This person was meticulous in um, the way they carried out this crime, and 
we want to be even more so in our pursuit of information and trying to put whoever did this to her um, behind bars and, and bring some justice for her. So you said her DNA was on file. Was. So why did it take her sister coming forward to make that match? Because it was not in CODIS, which is the FBI matching system that we use. It was on file with BCI. And that wasn't ran before? No, only, only suspects involved in crimes have their DNA run and put into CODIS. There's no database uh, for that, if that's what you're asking. So okay. you would have to know who to look for. Okay. At this point, who do you think the murderer is? Someone close to her? Um, you know, when this first happened, there were a lot of people speculating about a killer on the loose. Is that, what is your feeling on who you're looking for? Um, we never thought it was a serial killer situation. Um, we do think it was somebody known to her. Um, so we don't know what the length of that relationship or um, it was at the time. I mean, it could have been that day. It could have been somebody she knew for months. It could have been, you know, somebody that she had a relationship with. We just don't have a whole lot of information. That's why we're saying anybody that has information about anybody she was seen with, um, might have had a relationship with, um, might have seen an argument, anything that might help us uh, try and identify some people to go talk to even, that might have more information. Now this must be a big sigh of relief for you guys. I mean, this is a big break in the case and now you can really move forward now that you know who she is. Can you just talk to me about that? Uh, that initial reaction once you got that identification back. Yeah, I, I can tell you what it was in our office, <laughs> and then I can talk about uh, this is PD. You know, we um, there are very few cases in our database that we have not identified, and we struggle. It's that's one of our biggest thing is struggling to identify every decedent that comes into our office. So that one, you know, was was right there, and just really wanted to know who she was and see uh, if we could give some family uh, some peace. So knowing who she was was a huge relief. We um, had already matched the head to the body with DNA, so we knew that that was her head. Uh, but being able to um, put a face uh, to the body uh, was, I think, huge for us. Um, it helps us move to different other parts of the investigation where Cincinnati police can tell you how much, or if it was, helpful to know who she was. Thanks, Doctor. Absolutely, it's helpful. I mean, that's, we knew that that was going to be the next um, major break in the case was identifying who the victim is. And knowing that we have a Michaela identified, uh, that's going to lead us to who the relationships were that she had. Um, any acquaintances you might have known. Uh, I do know from talking to detectives, she had a drug uh, and a mental health history as well. So that might be another uh, thing to mention in your stories that um, you know, people might, might have seen her in, in a situation where she was using uh, drugs and, and known her that way. Um, so we're, we're just looking for help from the community. Uh, now knowing the identity, that's, that's the next big break. But now the next big break after that is people coming forward with information. Um, we're going to do our efforts and our detectives are working tirelessly to get information through their feet on the ground, true detective work, knocking on doors, canvassing, talking to people, but we can't do it alone. We need the public's help, your help as media professionals, sharing this information with your audiences. Uh, that's what we need. So we're asking for your help um, and we want to get answers. Just as Dr. Samarco said, we want to bring um, justice for Michaela and get answers for her and her family. She deserves that. Do you have an exact date of the, the positive ID match? I don't, personally. Mm. I, I, I don't, off the top of my head. But you did ask a question about why BCI had her profile, but it wasn't in CODIS. Usually victim profiles are not put into CODIS, but suspect profiles are. Well, why, why is that you were able to run this is like a suspect profile to compare the DNA you have from her body? Um, we don't have a suspect profile. 
So, but wait, okay. So, you, but she was in she was in the BCI system, you're saying, right? The BCI database, which yeah. is separate from CODIS. Okay. So we did run her DNA through CODIS. Did not match anybody, and we were not aware that BCI had her DNA profile in their database separately until a family member came forward. And of course, you wouldn't know to run it through their system because you didn't know who she was. Right. So then we asked BCI, um, using her name, Kayla Lucky, and BCI said, we have her DNA in our database. So we were able to match it. It was a Facebook post. Okay, I did hear you. Somebody saw Cincinnati Police's pa Facebook post, and I don't know on whose page, but we forwarded it, and we had friends and family try and forward it out there, and somebody saw that, thought it might be her, and reached out to her family, uh, who are out of state, and um, they looked at it, um, and she had been missing for that long, and like Captain Saunders said, she did have a history of um, brain health issues and um, had been estranged from her family. So they didn't have a whole lot of information about where she might have been because she would come and go. And so um, nobody really had good track of her. So, uh, but they came forward and said, you know, could this be, you know, we suspect that this could be our family member and we took it from there. They gave us a name and uh, reached out to BCI and that's where we found out that there actually was, um, her DNA profile was in their database. And one more thing to clarify, I'm sorry, you did mention um, a local family member back in November, the last time she had been seen, mm -hmm. did see her get on a Metro bus. Correct. Okay. That is correct. And was that the, the day that she's believed to have been killed was when? I think it was the day before, yeah. Um, well, um, obviously this person hasn't come forward. Um, we are doing what we can and we will continue to try and bring justice for Michaela. So I don't know who you are, but just so you know, this is what we do and uh, we are hoping to bring some peace to the family. While the family finds a measure of relief in knowing that Michaela has been identified and is no longer missing, their hearts are shattered and their minds haunted by the gruesome details of her murder. In the words of her sister, it's clear that whoever took her life intended to erase any trace of her existence. Now, the family is determined to seek justice for their beloved Michaela. Despite her struggles, there is no excuse for the brutality of her demise. It's imperative that those with knowledge come forward. The perpetrator of this heinous act is a danger to society and must be apprehended without delay. A son has been robbed of his mother, and siblings are left to mourn the loss of their sister. This family is crying out for justice, and it's our collective duty to tirelessly pursue Michaela's killer. As they navigate their profound grief, let's hold them close in our thoughts and prayers, especially her son, who now faces a life without his mother. May Michaela Lucky rest in peace, and may justice prevail.